talking about how to connect the body. Now, how we're gonna connect the body this time, we're gonna work on the body stretch and then ultimately the leg stretch and the connection between the two. So, when we talk about the body stretch, we wanna make sure that we're stretching the spine of our body, all right? So how do we do that? One, you can stand up straight, just like your mom said, okay? Stand up nice and straight, and then from here, you wanna make sure you gently tilt the head forward so you feel that little stretch in the back and left. So let me use Lou for a second here, standing from a little bit of an angle here. So, when you stretch it, see right here, now we'll do it incorrectly first. See how it is, the back is kinda of hunched over, but from here, you wanna stand up nice and straight. Now, the next thing you want to do is stretch the top of the neck from the top of the butt. Hey. And then from here, you want to rotate forward until you feel that little stretch here. All right? Now, again, it might be a little tight in the beginning. That's okay because you have to sometimes play with extremes to find the balance in the middle. The next thing you want to do is that you're going to roll the hips forward. So when you roll the hips forward, you don't want to push the hips forward. This rolling the hips forward is what's going to connect the legs to the body. Now, when this is straight and you want to feel a certain tautness, it shouldn't be tight, it should not be loose, but you want to feel the balance, what I call tautness. If I was to, as a teaching example here, press on Lou and try to kind of twist Lou a little bit, you'll feel that tautness there and it'll naturally spring back. So let's go step a little bit sideways here so we can see that. Yeah. So again, if Lou has the right tautness in his back and I try to twist a little bit, it'll naturally spring back. Now, if he's too loose and kind of slumped over a little bit like that and I go with the same twist, it, there's no natural spring back to that. Again, just as a teaching example to the balance that you want to have, you should have that natural tautness to it. So like I talked about before, this stretch of the shoulder and I have a natural tautness in my arm, and that the back now, when you comes in and pushes on my arm here, yeah, see, it winds up and it'll naturally let go to its original position. If I push incorrectly and Luke pushes on me and I'm like this and he lets go, see, now I'm springing that way because my focus is not in front of me like I'm learning to do throughout all my forms, but now my focus is actually going that way. That is one of the most challenging things to learn in Wing Chun is how to develop the forward focus to the target. You have to understand the triangle in front of you here and taking this triangle and pointing it at the center of the other person. So let's go, go into the next step now, which is the legs. All right, so when Luke gets into Ichi Kima, I'm standing right there. Actually, I'm gonna do it you get the pants on. I mean, can't exactly see it. So as I bend my knees forward here, it brings my body to the center of my foot. Now, notice the shape of my leg here. This is what we call a V-shape or a gentle V-shape for my leg. I'm not straight-legged here because that puts my body weight on my heel. As I bend my knees forward, I'm bringing my body weight to the center of my foot. Now, as I said, the connection from the legs to the body, this is pivotal. It's the hips rolling forward. So, as I do that, I want to be careful not to push forward with my hips because that's going to throw my vertical axis off and backwards. When you walk around, you walk around with a good vertical axis, hopefully. All right, so you don't fall to the ground. Same idea in Wing Chun. I need to maintain this vertical axis so I can let everything else relax. The more I stand up straight, the more I can let my arms relax. The more I'm off balance, the more I need to counterbalance with my arms so I don't fall over. Commonsensical. That's why I love Wing Chun. All based on common sense, how the body actually moves. So, as a teaching point here, now that you see my action here, now I want Lou is going to twist my shoulders. Now, watch my legs as, if, as the tautness kind of wounds up here too. So when he comes in here to twist and he lets go, it naturally springs back to its original position as a teaching point to how the connection is there. When you apply that, you need to be aware of that connection so you have the three structures working together, leg, body, arms, ultimately working together as one true structure. But if I hold on to that tightness and feel that tautness during application, it'll be way too tight. It's gonna throw off your timing, and everything's going wrong. So you have to understand what is development for body awareness and body control to application, which is the free flowing motion to the target, which is obviously the other person. So if you combine all that with now the arm structure, 
Now we're gonna go and demonstrate that same twist. So now when I'm here and I have my shoulders stretched forward properly, I don't wanna flex down this way, but if I understand the, the punch, I will rotate forward so I feel the stretch in my arms. Now I stand up straight so I have good posture. I stretch the neck, I rotate the hips. I feel the L4, L5 flatten out back here. I rotate, don't push. I feel the connection now, legs, body. I have the V-shape of my body here. Now, if you do pushes on my triangle laterally, see from here, now if you let's go, it naturally springs back to its original position. But that's if you have the right connection. The connection is important because it allows you to use the skeletal system and the tendons and ligaments to create the connection, which allows you to use minimal muscular use. Why is that minimal muscular use important? So you can apply whatever you're doing naturally and relax. And you can ultimately transition from motion to motion to motion. If I'm so tight here, because I think I have to block him, and then it's gonna be hard for me to transition to that next motion, because now I'm gonna be fighting the force at this moment in time. And if I'm too tight here, I have to relax that and then be able to move. And then you know, if you're fighting the force, muscle versus muscle, you're not stronger than it, you're gonna lose 100% of the time, yada, yada, yada. Talk about that a lot, and we'll talk about that more in the future. But this is where it starts for basic body connection. Uh, next video I'll go to, I'm gonna get into uh, the chisa roll a little deeper, and we'll go from there. Good luck.